Hello everybody. Today we'll see a case of an elderly lady of 74 presenting with acute heart failure into the hospital. She is known diabetic, hypertensive and there is a history of acute heart failure symptoms in the past. She was given IV furosemide on admission and symptomatically she improved. She was absolutely fine next 48 hours. But on the third day, he started, she started getting high grade fever of 102 degree Fahrenheit along with tachycardia and her respiratory rate rose up to 13 breaths per minute and she had fall in oxygen saturation to 91% on room air. Her chest x-ray was done and that showed that there was lower lobe consolidation with congestive heart failure signs were there externally. We can see that there was tachycardia, tachypnea, although the blood pressure was normal, although her basal crepitations were not increased, she did not have a PDL edema, neither there was a sign of fluid overload. But the fever with acute presentations of pulpit, uh, tachycardia and tachypnea with drop in saturation suggestive of infective pathology and then the clinical diagnosis was pneumonia which x-ray shows that there was lower lobe consolidation on the right side. So the question is what should be the empiric treatment for this particular patient which is appropriate. A should we go for ceftriaxone or azithromycin? B should we go for ceftriaxone, diofloxacin or vanco and vancomycin? C clindamycin or should we only increase her furosemide dose, diuretic dose along with sedation like morphine to her. Now when you see a patient of pneumonia it is important to first define the type of pneumonia and since this identify the likely organism and necessary antibiotic treatment. We know there is a hospital acquired pneumonia, we know there is a ventilator associated pneumonia, we know healthcare associated pneumonia, community acquired pneumonia. Now hospital acquired pneumonia refers to the development of pneumonia more than 48 hours after the administration and hospitalization and there is no evidence of pneumonia on admission at the time of presentation. A type of hospital acquired pneumonia is ventilator associated pneumonia which occurs 40 to 72 hours after mechanical ventilation. Healthcare associated pneumonia develops in a patient with recent or ongoing contact with healthcare personnel or facilities like patient hospitalized for more than two days in the last 90 days, patient living in the long term care facility or patient receiving dialysis regularly. And lastly the Coventry acquired pneumonia, you can see the pneumonia in those patients who develop in all other patients what we see in clinical practice. Now coming to the choice of antibiotics and empiric antibiotics of an inpatient community acquired pneumonia consist of anti-pneumococcal antibody, uh, anti-pneumococcal vitalactam that is ampicillin sulbactam, ceftriaxone, cefotaxin, cefotoralin or ertapenum and a macrolide like azithromycin or clarithromycin. An alternative to this is a respiratory quinolones that is leofloxacin or moxofloxacin. Clindamycin also can be a good agent when you suspect aspiration pneumonia and may be used as a monotherapy in that case. Now somebody who is having heart failure and not improving her symptoms of heart failure then definitely you can go for increased dose of diuretics but in, as in our case this patient has fever associated with other symptoms of tachycardia and tachypnea with fall in saturation such as consolidation she needs to undergo she needs to uh, antibiotic therapy. Now let's see what are the common etiologies of pneumonia and what is the empiric antibiotic regime. Community acquired pneumonia is mostly caused by streptococcus pneumonia, H influenzae and mycoplasma and various other. But these three are very commonly seen in our common practice. Such patient when presented in OPD, you can straightway start with macrolide or doxycycline. You can go for azithromycin or clarithromycin or doxycycline. Such patients of coronary acquired, community acquired pneumonia get 
hospitalized then you can go for anti pneumococcal beta lactam as i have already enumerated that along with macrolide or respiratory fluoroquinolones like leofloxacin or moxifloxacin or ceftriaxone with clarithromycin or azithromycin if this patient is admitted in the icu then again you can go for anti pneumococcal beta lactam along with macrolide or fluoroquinolone with vancomycin as in our case this patient <clears throat> is not having community acquired pneumonia but hospital associated pneumonia but this combination of three is used in this particular patient the second category of ventilator associated pneumonia or hospital care associated pneumonia especially the gram negative organisms are the responsible organisms in these cases you can see pseudomonas klebsiella e coli then staph aureus both methicillin sensitive as well as methicillin methicillin sensitive as well as methicillin resistant back staph aureus and acinetobacter so those patients without other risk of developing multi drug resistant organisms you can straight away go for ampicillin sulbactam or ceftriaxone or ertapenem or fluoroquinolone but those with multi drug resistant organisms risk factors associated with this they can go for anti pseudomonal antibiotic with anti mrsa antibiotic with fluoroquinolone or aminoglycosides like piperacillin tazobactam with vancomycin with gentamicin especially those patients presented with aspiration pneumonia especially these organisms are macro organisms from oropharynx and that's why although there is no consensus today we can use clindamycin or amoxicillin clavulinate in this particular patient as a good option you can use metronidazole in such patients but don't use as a monotherapy so metronidazole can be used in combination with these two antibiotics but not as a monotherapy in community acquired patient so in this particular patient we have given ceftriaxone leofloxacin and vancomycin she improved with that on fifth day she was out of icu and on seventh day she was discharged safely at home thank you